Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll explore the visionary world of Walter Russell, the man who dared to challenge conventional scientific thinking. The great Serbian inventor, Nikola Tesla, was a big fan of Walter Russell. He was so impressed by Russell's ideas about the universe and how it works that he advised Russell to keep his discoveries hidden away for a thousand years. Tesla believed that humanity wasn't ready to fully grasp and appreciate his profound insights just yet. From scientific philosopher to renowned sculptor, painter, author, musician, and mystic. And if you enjoy figure skating, he introduced figure skating to America. While many of Russell's ideas have not found widespread acceptance among mainstream scientists, his unyielding commitment to forging connections between science and spirituality has left its indelible mark. In his book, The Secret of Light, he writes, Man lives in a bewilderingly complex world of effect, of which he knows not the cause. Because of its seemingly infinite multiplicity and complexity, he fails to envision the simple underlying principle of balance in all things. He, therefore, complexes truth until its many angles, sides, and facets have lost balance with each other and with him. Truth is simple. Balance is simple. The rhythmic balanced interchange between all pairs of opposite expressions in natural phenomena and human relations is the consummate art of God's universe of light. It is also the law. Russell believed that all matter is created by dividing gravity into pairs and created a mesmerizing chart that unveiled the intricate dance of every element along a nine octave cycle. To illustrate his hypotheses, Russell relied on illustrations that are as visually striking as they are mysterious. Born to Nova Scotian immigrants in Boston on May 19, 1871, Russell led an unconventional life. He had his first illumination experience at the age of seven in 1878. It will be his first out-of-body experience. In 1885, at 14 years old, he was reportedly pronounced dead after an attack of black diphtheria, but claimed he was asked to return during another out-of-body experience. He claimed at some point to have been struck by lightning. The year 1921 would be life-changing for Walter. He started his self-study and was the first to coin the phrase electromagnetic wave universe. As he turned 50 in May of 1921, his life took an unexpected turn with another out-of-body experience he termed cosmic illumination during which he received new knowledge in the light. This great intellectual and spiritual encounter provided him with profound insights into the nature of matter, light, and the mechanics of the universe. Immersed in this amazing cosmic state for 39 days, Russell utilized the opportunity to document and illustrate everything he discovered, intending to share his newly discovered knowledge with the world. Through his newfound insight, Russell unveiled a remarkable discovery. All matter originates from a zero-point field of energy, the genuine essence of the universe. He revealed that we are all electric creatures floating in an electric sea of this electric universe. The electric energy which motivates us is not within our bodies at all. It is a part of the universal supply which flows through us from the universal source with an intensity set by our desires and our will. Perhaps the most significant consequence of his illumination was the Russell periodic chart of elements that he introduced in 1926. His periodic table not only offered a clear and sophisticated explanation of the composition of atoms and various elements, but also successfully predicted the discovery of radioactive elements, which had not yet been discovered at the time, such as deuterium, tritium, neptunium, and plutonium. What is most remarkable about Russell's periodic table is the completely unconventional approach he takes to explain the ultimate framework of nature and its elements, which according to him, is wholly musical in its structure. 
According to Russell, nature is divided into a total of nine distinct octaves or pressure states. These nine bands are employed to categorize elements based on varying forces of compression and expansion. He wrote, it will be remembered that no one who has ever had the experience of illumination has been able to explain it. I deem it my duty to the world to tell of it. Walter believed he could now perceive all motion and was aware of all things. The New York newspapers of the day published articles stating that Walter Russell challenged the Newtonian theory of gravitation. It would be more fitting for an artist of Mr. Russell's acknowledged distinction in his field to remain in it. For nearly 300 years, no one, not even a scientist, has had the temerity to question Newton's laws of gravitation. Such an act on the part of a scientist would be akin to blasphemy. And for an artist to question Newton is crass ignorance. Russell pivoted to sculpture, achieving worldwide recognition with remarkable creations like the Mark Twain Memorial and the Four Freedoms Monument, which was commissioned by President Franklin Roosevelt, creating larger-than-life busts of American heroes like Thomas Edison and George Gershwin. He even held the prestigious title of official sculptor at the White House. What makes this accomplishment particularly astonishing is that Walter was a self-taught sculptor. And from the very beginning, he produced stunning sculptures. There was no learning curve. He started as a master. Russell deeply believed that every human being is capable of extraordinary things and can achieve greatness by respecting and recognizing man's cosmic connection with the universe. He said, I believe that every man can multiply his own ability by almost constant wordless realization of his unity with his source. I have myself made that feeling so much a part of me that I actually feel myself to be an extension of the source, that my works are not my own, but interpretations of this source. Walter's artistic ability allowed him to depict his three-dimensional universe in a two-dimensional graphic format. He went on to craft numerous enigmatic and artistic graphics on space, time, motion, and the cosmos. These remain a mystery even today. Driven by an obsession with the physics of light, he pioneered New World Thought, offering over a dozen books on the subject. Notable works include A New Concept of the Universe, which came out in 1953, in which he developed a different understanding of light, matter, energy, electricity, and magnetism. Walter Russell believed that all matter emanated from light, emphasizing interconnectedness, relativity, pairing, and balance in everything. His theory-supporting diagrams are artworks in their own right intricate intersecting hoops, vibrant pulsating radiation illustrations, and twisting pyramids and polygons. They bear a striking resemblance to the abstract geometric art of his time, like the modernist works of Kandinsky. Aside from his pursuits in science and art, Russell had a leisurely passion for figure skating. He established the New York Skating Club, organized an event at Madison Square Garden, and brought in top instructors to popularize figure skating in America. Remarkably, he continued winning competitions into his late 60s. In 1948, Russell received a mysterious phone call when Daisy Stebbing read Walter Russell's book based on his belief that the foundation of the universe is love, balance, and unity. She called him. I know your voice. I've been hearing it inside of me for decades. Walter Russell dubbed her Lao after the Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu, the author of the Tao Te Ching and the founder of Taoism. He divorced his first wife of 50 years and two years later, at the age of 77, he married 44-year-old Daisy, an English immigrant, former model and businesswoman. It was quite the scandal. The newlyweds traveled the US seeking a home for the Walter Russell Foundation. They found a neglected Italian Renaissance villa in Waynesboro, Virginia, and transformed it into the University of Science and Philosophy, a foundation and museum for Walter's work. There, the couple continued publishing books. They were particularly concerned with the radiation legacy from the nuclear fuels, which they warned against in their book, Atomic Suicide, which came out in 1957. In 1960, Walter and Lau Russell published The Electrifying Power of Man-Woman Balance. The Russells wrote this book to usher in a new era in human affairs, one that aligns with the unwavering laws of nature. 
Walter Russell passed away in 1963 on his birthday, May 19th. He was 92 years old. Upon his death, Walter Cronkite of CBS News called him the Leonardo da Vinci of our time. Despite his extensive writings and insights on scientific topics, Walter Russell is often dismissed as an outsider, a pseudoscientist, with his ideology rarely accepted by the mainstream scientific community today. He believed he could see the very essence of creation and that every man has consummate genius within themselves. Mediocrity is self-inflicted and genius is self-bestowed. If you found this video informative, be sure to like and subscribe for more explorations into history, spirituality, and the mysteries that continue to captivate our curiosity. Until next time, keep exploring and may your journey be filled with enlightenment and divine guidance.